So that was a, uh, that was a good game for us. Uh, it was a great environment. Uh, I applaud the, uh, the crowd again, the students. And uh, uh, tonight, I know it was a little rainy, a little chilly, but it's awesome. Uh, the crowd got into the game and very engaged with the team, helped us a lot. Um, offensively and defensively, we made really good adjustments at halftime. I'm, I was pleased with our coaching in this game. I thought our plans at, at halftime, I thought our plans were okay, not great. And then we made adjustments on both sides of the ball and, and uh, really, really good adjustments by the staff, both staffs, and worked well for us in the second half. Uh, we were able to, to pick up and, and rush the ball a little bit. They played run defense. Um, it was a little bit like we used to see in the old days. The safeties were low. Had one safety at 10 and one at eight. Everybody else playing run, which is, I guess, smart on their part. Uh, you know, we had this we'd done and done well lately. Uh, they came in with a plan to stop the run and see if we could throw it. And we were able to hit some throws. You know, it was nice for Leon to step up and make some plays. We were down some guys at the wide receiver position and him um, to come in and make some plays. And then. Uh, a couple adjustments, as I mentioned, helped us rush the ball better in the second half. Uh, did a better job of, of tackling and condensing the running game from a defensive standpoint uh, in the second half. So it was a good win for us. And, um, you know, just told the team they, they can enjoy this one tonight and, and we got to go back to work. You know, it's college football. Um, celebrate a lot in the locker room. Sometimes it's not as happy and you got to go back to work the next day and get ready to keep rolling. What does it, it say about Ollie that they came in with a plan to stop the run? And they're a good rushing defensive team. And to see what he did tonight. Uh, we, we blocked him in the second half. All right. So we, we ran OK in the first half. Um, we made a couple adjustments in a, in a, run, in a run game concepts. And uh, there's places for him to run. His crease is two and three yards wide. And so um, the, they've done that now. Our, our offensive line's done that for four or five weeks now. We're, uh, we're blocking. and. Uh, covering guys up, creating some holes. He's running, and then when he gets through there, he's running. He's running physical. He's running away. Seeing his vision's really good right now. It has a good run defense. Their team's a good run team. I'm just telling you, they're 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 pretty good. Um, you know, if somebody would have said we could have rushed for over 315 yards, I would have said, Nah, I'm not so fast. Um, and we broke one in the end, a long one there that pushed the numbers up. But not, it's pretty safe to say we rushed consistently for 250. Um, but we're blocking them. We're covering them up. And we're blocking them. What's he run the 40 in? That, that last run, about a good 50 yards, he's out running about three or four guys. What's, what's his 40 time? You know, I don't, I don't know for sure. Um, he's pretty competitive. He has good competitive speed. You know, he used to talk a lot about Hartley Dykes being a 4'6 guy, but he never got caught in space. His competitive speed was really good. I think all he has really good competitive speed. I think he feels guys coming behind him, and he kind of weaves and takes off and goes pretty good. And the one advantage he does have, you know, he's no, he doesn't have the – that um, that burst from, you know, 10, 15 feet, but he's a big strider when he gets in the open field. So they, they kind of have a hard time getting him from behind. I'm not sure what he runs, but his competitive speed is pretty good. Mike, after the first half, they had 258 yards of offense. They ended up with 184 in the second half, but at one point early in the fourth quarter, they only had 90. Mm -hmm. What did you see from your defense in the second half? Well, they made some adjustments in the way that we were handling the running game. They got us on the inside, on the old school lead zone in the first uh, in the first half, and we we weren't and we missed some tackles again. I think we just me uh, looked like to me we missed five or six tackles, uh, and we didn't miss any really in the second half. The first half we did. We had twice we had guys in position they just didn't make the play. But we made an adjustment on their lead zone concept, and it, it helped us out. And then we were able to pressure the quarterback in the second half and made a big difference. Mike, I know you don't want to give away uh, the secrets, but in terms of what you guys changed offensively to start opening those creases, is there anything you can kind of tell uh, us? It, it's not really anything secret. It's just concept scheme-wise. and. Um, Using a, um, pullers in a little bit different way. I mean, it's not anything that's complicated or it's not like it's a secret. It's just the way they were playing us. They came in with a lot more line movement than what they had shown in the first seven games or how many games they played, six, whatever. Uh, and I'm sure it's because they're, I'm not sure. My guess is because they're trying to um, find ways to slow Ollie down in the running game. And so they, they had some, some decent line stunts and some twists and things and some backers coming over the top. So um, we just went 
we kept with our, our gap schemes and zone schemes, and we just kind of tightened them up a little bit to where we knew exactly what we wanted to do and didn't worry about the wide guys. And so it allowed us to have some creases in the middle. Most of the creases in the second half were in the B gap or the A gap. And that's kind of what we planned, we wanted to do based on some of the stuff they did to slow our running game down, in my opinion. It looked like Leon was on track to redshirt. Was that the plan, and has that changed now that he has a night like tonight? You got a little thin at that position. Um, well, he, he needs to play. We're down some receivers right now, and until we get all everybody back, when I don't know when that'll be. You know, he's we got to play. But we don't have a lot of depth at that position right now. Did he surprise you at all with what he was able to do today? Um, I think that's a fair uh, comment. I felt like he would play really good, but I'm, I'm not going to say I thought that he would step up the first time and go for 150. So I think surprise is uh, pleasantly kind of surprised. But he's always practiced well. And I mean, you have to give him credit. You know, one thing it's difficult for college players to do is to stay engaged and practice hard and compete when you think on Saturday, I might not get to play that much, right? That's hard. We talk to the players about that all the time, that um, you never know when you're going to get to play, but it's still hard to tell a guy, hey, I need you to grind. I need you to bust it in practice. I need you to watch extra tape. I need you to do all these things. Oh, and you might not get to play very much. And he's done a good job of that. And when we needed him at West Virginia, he stepped up and made, you know, he helped us. And then he practiced all week and, and played well today. That's a real challenge for young people nowadays to, to understand the commitment it takes, even though if you might not think you're going to get to play very much on Saturday. Is it harder because you're so deep in the season, but you need him, but you want to say, man, if you could save him until next year and get more out of him, is that, is that energy you thought? Well, it, we didn't have to make that decision. The decision was made for us. We, we've got to play. You know, we're, we're down three wideouts in this game. Um, we lost Stribling a few weeks ago. And I mean, we're down three of our starting four wide receivers we started the season with. So we have to have other guys step up and play. And he was the guy, he's the next guy to step up and make some plays. Mike, in uh, Wednesday's November, and you're in first place. You have to change. You don't have to change, but do you have a different kind of feeling about what this team can achieve and its upside? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's week to week. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I mean, I don't need to repeat myself. And the, the parity across college football, this league's no different. Is mm, you got you have to practice well and prepare well, and you got to play well and try to minimize turnovers and play good on special teams. Give yourself a chance to win. And I, I think that, as I've said, this is college football is moving forward now. This we've turned into the NFL, and it's going to be week to week. And fortunately, we've our guys have played good over the last four or five weeks. They believe in themselves. They're practicing very well. They're, uh, we don't have to. I don't have to say anything to them. They have a, a high level of enthusiasm and energy, which has become contagious. So good things are happening. And as long as they'll stay humble, uh, stay hungry, uh, and not expect anything, they'll have a chance to to compete and play well in all the games. In in my opinion. But if you go the other way, and I just I just mentioned that to the team. If you start to swing the other way and for some reason think you don't have to practice as hard or maybe you're a little bit sore or tired and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to practice Tuesday, I'm going to come back and it doesn't work that way. I've seen it for 35 years. You have to practice hard every day. If you're injured, you're injured. It's the difference between being injured and hurt. If you're hurt, you got to practice hard and you have to expect results through the week to play well on Saturday. And I know that sounds like coaches talk, but that's just the way it is. In the first half, uh, Ollie fumbles and he goes to the sideline and throws his helmet down. He's obviously frustrated. You go over and talk to him. What do you kind of tell him there? And what, what's the conversation with a guy, a guy that's still a younger guy in the locker room, but he's had the experience, has the you know, maturity we talked about? What, what, do you have, what do you kind of tell him in, the, in that moment? So Ollie wants to perform well for everybody all the time like we all do, right? We all want to do good, and then people tell us that we're doing good, and that human nature is we like that. And he now, everywhere he goes, people chant his name. Goes to homecoming last night, they chant his name. Walks off the field today, they chant his name. There's a lot of pressure involved in that. And he's a very <clears throat> prideful young man. And that's good. But what I shared with him is I've been around the greatest running backs to ever play this game. None of them did that. They all learned to keep their composure. There's times that they don't play as well. There's times they make a mistake. 
And if he wants to play this game for a long time, then he'll learn to, to keep composure. Because all that's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy, it's a waste of effort, and it becomes negative for the football team. And that's what I told him. And I said, it's a choice you make, not me. It's our team and your career. Our team and your career, your choice. But that is going to get you nowhere. That is not going to get us anywhere. So the six or eight or ten backs I've been around that are really, 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 really good, and two of them or three of them that are best ever, don't do that. And so he had a choice to make then. He can get mad at me and sulk, feel sorry for himself and try to make a statement, or he can say, I'm sorry, I apologize, I'm going to do better. That's, what, that's the choices he has to make at that particular time. Either way, that's his choice. How did you see him kind of progress the rest of the game? Obviously, he, he said, Coach, I apologize. I'll do better. And I said, I, I'm glad to see that. That means we're going to be better, and then you're going to be better for the rest of your career. And that's what he chose to do. Having two back-to-back 300-yard -back rushing games, how has that changed the entire profile from your perspective of what you feel like you can achieve moving forward now? Uh, uh, say it again. Two, you know, Ollie had near two near back-to-back 300 -back yards rushing in your offense, had rushing well the last two games. How's that really change your profile moving forward? What do you feel like you can accomplish now as you go through the rest um, of the season? Well, we're, I mean, obviously we're able to run the ball effectively now over the last three or four weeks or whatever, and prior to that we couldn't run it a lick. So we, we're getting a little bit better at running the ball. We're covering people up, and we're we're a little more physical. And a back's running physical. You know, it's nice to get 24 in there tonight. Elijah did a nice job running. So success is contagious. And now they all think they can run good behind our line, and they're getting some creases. And when you start to do things like that, it, it works out well for you and helps you in the long run. But I'll go back to what I said earlier now. It's only if we practice well this week. We're not good enough to not practice well and then perform well on Saturday. We're not that good. This is what you envision your offensive line back in the spring. I remember you, you talked about you thought you had eight guys you thought could play. This is what you envision them, them doing, the offensive line? That is. Well, in the spring and in August, the one thing I said to you guys was we're better at running the ball than we were last year. But that doesn't say much. We could be real average and be better than we were last year. But I told you we were better than we were. I don't know how far along, but I said I know we're better. The strides we've made over the last four or five weeks, I think, have uh, it's fair to say it surprised all of us. But they have practiced really, really hard, and we have condensed um, the responsibilities they have, and repetition has made them better. And then fortunately our backs are seeing things, and it's just kind of become contagious and getting a little bit better at it every week. How would you think Bowman played? I thought he played pretty good. He, he um, uh, he, I mean, he fired a couple of three balls in there that makes me nervous. Um, 17-34-2. I mean, um, he threw one interception, right? And threw a ball behind it and got tipped. Was it one interception? Um, but he got the ball to open receivers. Uh, you know, I mean, he's set his feet. Um, he needs to. He sh you know, he's, he's, they're working on him, but he slides and shuffles at times that he doesn't need to, and that's kind of when he gets in trouble. But um, overall, he handled things fairly well, in my opinion. Mike, there's, there's not many games in college football now. Their starting quarterback only completes six passes. How did you do it today? Um, just said what now? I mean, the starting quarterback for Cincinnati only completed six oh, passes. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. How did you do that? Um, how did we do it? Well, they were running the ball good in the first in the first half. They didn't need to throw a pass. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I think they, again, I'm just guessing, when I watched the first quarter, they came in with a defensive plan to not let us rush the ball. And their offensive plan was to use the clock by running the ball. And they had success at it, so there's no reason to go away from it. Then it was raining, and it was wet, it was cold, and so I would guess that that played into their hand where they said, hey, this is great. We're running the ball well. Um, we're keeping them off the field. We're playing run defense in the box. And it's raining and it's cold. Why do anything different? That would be my guess. Like you kind of mentioned some of the, you've seen some really good running backs here. Played with them, obviously, too. 
Ollie's the first person since Barry. They're the only two in program history with back-to-back 250-yard -back games. What goes through your mind when you hear something like that? Well, those are, you know, you're getting into a whole different level of guys, and, and I was very fortunate to have, have been around some great backs, um, and, and I can legitimately express things to Ollie from experience. Um, it, Ollie's still young. Uh, he, uh, he's got a long ways to go in his career. Uh, but he has changed considerably over the last five weeks with us condensing our running game down. Uh, but it is what it is. Just what you said is, it's a fact. So um, he's not arrived, but we have to give him credit for what he's done. It's not like it's the first game he's done this. But I've told him, and I'm going to tell him, I'll tell him again when I see him tomorrow or Monday, he has to stay hungry and he has to stay humble, period or you'll get your block knocked off. What does it mean for the program to be bowl eligible for the 18th straight year, especially after the, the early season struggles that you guys had? Um, especially after what? The early season struggles. Um, uh, you know, all those things are great. Um, they're, they're, I mean, I, I don't know how many teams now have been bowl eligible 18 years in a row anymore. I don't keep up with it, but um, it's, we, we work really, really hard and I like to see the players rewarded and uh, the fruits for their labor. And those are, that's one of them. So, um, and, and it's good for us. Uh, you know, we've done it a long time now. And um, so, you know, coming from where we were after game three, uh, I'd say that over the last five weeks, it's a pretty good accomplishment. I'm just being honest with you. Does uh, Gunner or Rangel ever say, hey, give me a chance at quarterback? in games where Polly's getting the ball 25 times. <laughs> uh, no, they, they have it. You know, they, they, th those two guys fall in the category of you have to be willing to, to bust your tail and prepare and not get to play much, you know. Um, uh, you know, they've uh, – it's, 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 it's been difficult for us, really me, because of those two guys, because they really play pretty good. They just haven't got back out there. Um, and I hate it for, for Gunner and I hate it for Rangel both, but um, uh, Bowman's doing a good job, but you've been around and covering stuff, uh, Barry, for a long time, but when running backs run like they do, it's a lot better day for quarterbacks because it forces other people to play run and that allows us to throw passes. And all, all the quarterbacks we've had here for years that have had great years, they've all been tied in with running backs that were successful rushing the ball. And that's, pretty, that's consistent pretty much anywhere across the country. Uh, when you take um, Coach Leach, when he had just a pure old school throw it every snap, well, that's a whole different area. But the rest of us, as quarterbacks, play well when our running backs play well. And that gives us a lot of options. Last question. Hey, Mike, uh, people around the country are probably looking at Holly's numbers these last two weeks and thinking, where did this guy come from? If somebody told you in August, that he was going to have, I think, mean, two players in the last 20 years that had 300 or 250 scrimmage yards three straight weeks. Would you have thought the same thing back in August? <clears throat> We would not, would not have thought, if somebody would have, and I haven't really kept up, I know he's rushing for a lot of yards, and, but I haven't, if somebody would have said, okay, this is gonna happen, I'd be like, eh, be tough. Cause you know, we, we were not very good rushing team last year. And we've improved and improved and improved, but um, it's, uh, you know, the balance of an offense is important. He, it, all he needs to rush the ball well, then we can throw passes and balance it and get him to defend, and then we can rush the ball well. You know, that's just, you got to have both when you're not in just an all pure air attack. And that's what's happened here just recently. So hopefully we can, guys will practice well and stay focused. I think they will. Um, try to get some guys healthy and have a good week of practice, get ready to go again a week from today.